Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. Been away for a couple of weeks because I was home all last week with my wife. We don't usually get to be home together, so we had a real good time. I had a birthday, so I now qualify for senior meals at IHOP. And I'm not embarrassed by that because I find I can't really eat big breakfasts anymore anyhow. So I'm not really upset with that. I had a nice time. Um, but I want to start off by saying that, you know, this odd life doing videos. And I found that out because I had a video I wanted my wife to see. So I'm showing her the video. And she said, why do you tell people all this stuff? I said, well, because it's what I would do. And she said, do other people do this? I said, yeah, pretty much. You know, people talk about whatever they want to. Some people are really skilled and talented and know how to, you know, manipulate and edit videos and do things. But in general, you know, some of us give our opinions and we just talk about things that go on in our lives. And she said, wow, that just seems so odd. I said, well, you know, if you ever feel like sitting down, just watch some YouTube videos, go do it. My wife doesn't watch my videos, so there you go. What are you going to do? Uh, but it shows that, you know, YouTube has its own kind of community, the types of people who may watch videos as opposed to everyone. So I'm going to start with this thing here, which is also in the title, this thing about Fitbit. Now, for those of you who don't know what it is, it actually is kind of a tracker. It tracks steps. It can calculate the calories off those steps. It can track sleep. Now, what I've done is I use mine and I've integrated it into my fitness pal, which I've talked about quite a few times here. Okay, maybe twice, I think. And then, you know, you'll see this little linking thing over here showing you the video to my fitness pal uh, when I first started it. And that's all still going well. My glucose is still under control. I had a couple of days over last week because we got invited to a Labor Day thing and, you know, you're home and you're going to different things or whatever. I had a couple of days where it was a little rough and it was barely hanging in there. A couple of days, I, couple of days, I just blew it. But you know what? You're home. You have to take those days. But glucose stayed way under control. Anyway, this is what I got for my birthday and it doesn't look like much. And it's, it's called a Fitbit. And this is actually a Fitbit Flex. And it's got this little doohickey in it. And what this does is it tracks steps. And working with my fitness pal, it actually adds calories that you're allowed to eat for the day because it tracks your steps and then it calculates it and it puts it in there. And that's nothing new because fit, uh, my fitness pal had a thing where if you exercise, you could go and you could put that in manually and then it added some things to it. So this thing has been pretty interesting. I'm not overly sure fully how accurate it is, but what's been really intriguing is how it tracks sleep because I don't sleep well. Let me just put it that way. I do have a CPAP and I sleep better than I used to, but I still don't sleep well. So I've been tracking my sleep over the last few days and it's amazing. It seems that I am awake or moving way more than I'm just sleeping, uh, way more than half. Uh, one night, it was like 72%. <laughs> That's not good. But it now gives me something to check on and maybe talk with my sleep doctor about. And maybe I need some more adjustments or maybe I just need to be tied down or something like that. Okay, no, we're not having that. But it's interesting stuff. So I just wanted to mention that kind of thing. It only goes for about $100. And as a matter of fact, after I got mine, then my wife decided she want one, so I, you know, went and bought her one, and it syncs to the phone. So as long as you have uh, the My Fitness Pal app, you don't need that, by the way, because it turns out that you can track meals in Fitbit, but you actually have to put them in manually. I've told you about the My Fitness Pal. If you watched the other video, you know that it's you know a little simpler to use. At least it is for me. So now I'm back out of town, as you can tell, but. This is a totally different room. I get here Sunday afternoon and the general manager says, Mr. Mitchell, we've got a lot of people coming in for conventions this week. And so we couldn't get you where we normally put you. So we're going to be putting you in a different place. I said, OK, where are you putting me? He says, well, we're putting you in one of our rooms that has a fireplace. So I like, ooh, fireplace. Unfortunately, until it cools down, you don't get to use the fireplace, but still. It's a, it's a much bigger room than I usually get. The living room area is bigger. This bedroom is bigger. The kitchen is bigger. The bathroom is bigger. Everything is bigger, uh, except for the closet. The closet, I've actually lost some space, but that's okay. Who needs really gigantic closets? So it's kind of nice. And I'm on the second floor, 
And these only have two floors, so I don't have anyone above me for once. And they're a little more solid, so I don't hear the people below me, unless I'm in the bathroom and they have kids and you hear screaming. Yeah, I can handle that. And it's kind of neat, because now I have an actual place to always park my car where I will see my car. So I like that. And this week, next two weeks, I'm driving a Toyota Camry, a red Toyota Camry. Very cool, by the way. This is an upgraded car because... Uh, National has now decided that I deserve to be executive elite. Woo. Hey, we take our upgrades where we can get them, right? So, I'm back down in the south, and let me tell you, a day like today has really been interesting, at least for someone like me. Two weeks ago, I saw my first armadillo ever. It was dead. It had been hit by a car, but I saw armadillo live. I said, oh my God, I didn't know we had armadillos here. I thought they were just in Texas. Today... I decided to you know, take a break and just do a little walk around the parking lot. What do I run into? A live armadillo. And these suckers aren't small. I mean, you know, well, it's hard to judge. You can't see my hands. But, you know, it's about my the width of me with this really long tail. It was kind of brown. I wasn't sure what it would really look like, but it was brown. And it, was just, it just kind of freaked me out because I didn't expect to see it. And the thing is that these folks told me the first time I mentioned about an armor, they said, well, you know, they're really scared of people, so if it sees you, it's just going to run off. Mm -mm. This bad boy looked at me, and then he's like, I ain't worried about you. <laughs> it went back to doing what it wanted to do. Me, I kind of hesitated because what I'm used to is people saying, you know, if animals don't necessarily run away from you, unless it's something like squirrels where they're kind of used to people, that's not necessarily a good sign. Uh, a lot of times they're rabid, at least where I'm from. So I went inside and I mentioned, oh my goodness, I saw the armadillo out there. I said, oh, they, they're scared of people. They run. I said, this one didn't run. So when I was leaving work, I'm looking around, whatever, and one of the people I work with was just behind me. And suddenly there it is. I saw, hey, wait, wait, there he is. He's under the tree. He's right over there. She looks over. She says, mm, armadillo. He's just trying to get out of the sun. I said, yeah, but you said they ran from people. That one's not running. She said, yeah, they're harmless. And then later on, someone said that you can get leprosy from them. Now, I'm thinking they're probably kidding, but you know, I'll be looking that up a little bit later. <laughs> and if armadillos give you leprosy, I'm going to make sure I'm carrying something with me from now on. I'm going to smack that thing because Mitchell is not getting any leprosy. So I'm just saying that. Now, I then, you know, I come back to the hotel and I bought new sneakers over the weekend uh, because my feet had been really hot down here and at home and then I realized wait a minute these are these Gore-Tex sneakers that don't breathe at all which is I bought them for colder t climates but it's been hot and hadn't thought about it so I bought these new sneakers that actually would breathe and my wife was gonna send them down to me turns out she used my account and sent them overnight I can't wait to see that bill but I got them today so I decided well I'm gonna walk a little bit but I'm not gonna overly walk because it's still too darn hot so I had the shuttle take me to this restaurant, this uh, place called Jason's Deli, where I had this chicken pot pie soup that's just absolutely wonderful. By the way, Campbell's makes a chicken pot pie soup. No, stay away. Ooh, no. I couldn't season it to get it so that I could eat it. So, no. I'm just mentioning that now in case you're wondering. But I had this chicken pot pie soup. Wonderful stuff. And me being me, I said, you know, I don't want a sandwich. So let's see what else they have. And it turns out they had a baked potato. So, I ordered a baked potato. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get this little, you know, baked potato with some butter and bacon bits and chives, and it's, life's going to be wonderful. This baked potato was the size and this wide, and it was a monster. And I took a picture of it, and I wish I could show you the picture, but, you know, I didn't move it to the phone, so I can't upload it. But it's a monstrous baked potato. I said, oh, my God. So I took a picture of that, sent it to my wife, and said, well, I guess I keep misjudging this place because some of this stuff is pretty big. So I did not eat it all. I ate the soup first. I didn't eat it all. Matter of fact, the soup, bowl of soup would have been enough for me. Yeah, live and learn. And then I walked. I walked to Target. There's a Target store that's somewhere, you know, it's just relatively close. I have walked, I haven't actually walked to Target. I've walked to the restaurant that's in the same plaza as the Target. And then the restaurant and Target are at opposite ends. So I've walked from the restaurant to Target. But I've never just walked to Target because a lot of times I, I want to buy stuff that's cold. So I drive over. Therefore, you know, if I'm buying gelato or something that's cold, it's not going to warm up. And 
the gelato won't melt. So I walked from the restaurant there. I called the folks, asked them if someone could pick me up there, and I go shopping. And this is going to mean nothing to a ton of people, but it meant something to me. It's going to mean something to a few other people. Who do I run into but Jerry the King Lawler? I'm in Jerry the King Lawler's hometown. So for anyone who hasn't really figured out where I'm at yet, if they even care, recognize this is Jerry the King Lawler's hometown. But I didn't expect to see him down in this area of the city. So I said, Jerry the King, oh, it's, it's great to see you. And I'm just, I'm so happy that I get to, to see you. I said, I didn't even know you were from this area. He said, yep, well, thank you very much. And yep, this, this is where I'm from. Like, well, so I got to be somewhere close to his museum or whatever that I thought was way downtown. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But that's interesting. It's just Jerry the King Lawler with his woman. And I'm assuming maybe it's his wife and his son. I really don't know. I haven't kept up with all the personal stuff. And there they were just shopping in Target, buying food. Famous people have to buy food, too, I guess. There you go. So that was kind of fun. So life is pretty good these days. Had a great time at home. I'm back here doing okay. And, you know, hopefully next time I do a video, I'll focus more on something more specific. I do want to mention one thing, though. Might as well just get this out of the way. This is just something I want to touch upon. The Ray Rice thing. By now, almost everyone, whether you like football or not, has to have heard about this running back from the Baltimore Ravens named Ray Rice. Months ago, we knew that he had knocked out his wife in an elevator. We knew that because there was this picture of him dragging his wife out of the elevator. And he got two game suspension, which was really ridiculous. But the commissioner at the time said, we don't have anything. The wife didn't press in charges. Uh, the city, you know, put him in a rehab program to go do some thing and then his record to be expunged. So you're thinking it's all over. Then TMZ, these folks, oh my goodness, I don't know how they get the stuff they get. They got the video from the elevator showing him knocking her out. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to see that stuff. So therefore, I have not seen the video. I'm not going to see the video. And it, it's one of those kind of things where, one, I didn't feel like being voyeuristic. I'm thinking, I really don't need to see some man knocking out some woman. But two, I started thinking about his wife because because they got married. They were actually they were just engaged then, and then they married a month later. And the thing is that Yes, this is a guy who did a bad thing. He's now been, his contract was terminated by the Ravens. The NFL has, has him on indefinite suspension. But you put this video out there. Imagine you're her. And now you have to see this thing where you're knocked out. Now, supposedly his lawyer already had it. Maybe she'd seen it. Maybe she hadn't. But now it's all over TV and everybody is watching a video where she's getting knocked out by this man she married. She spit on him. And he didn't like it, and supposedly he knocked her out. Well, forget it. Supposedly he did knock her out. And I'm thinking, you know, that didn't need to be. But we've become the society in general where we don't believe anything that we hear unless we can really see it. Sometimes, of course, we recognize that things that we see aren't real either. But in this particular instance, I'm thinking I just didn't need to see it. And of course, what does she do? She comes out today and she says, you know, the media is ruining my life. It's embarrassing seeing this thing. I'm trying to put this behind me. We're trying to put this behind us, but everyone just keeps pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. Now, here's the thing. I have no sympathy for this guy. Even though his contract was terminated, they paid him a $25 million bonus. And you know what? He gets to keep it all. They can't even take it back because I guess it's not related to anything that they could actually, you know, sue him to get that money back. So he's got his $25 million. They've got money. They will be fine. But I'm wondering about her. I, I don't know. Someone let me know. Am I being too sensitive about this one? Or, you know, if you believe that I may have some kind of point, let me know. I was watching the Philip DeFranco video uh, earlier today, and he said the same kind of thing. You know, so I'm just wondering how y'all feel about that. Anyhow, this is Mitch Mitchell. I'm done for the moment. I'm a happy guy. Although it turns out that because of the soup and the potato, I don't have enough calories left for dessert. <sighs> C'est la vie. Y'all take care.